So I mocked up the crank trigger here on an engine just sitting on a stand. It'll be easier to see this way, not when it's in the engine compartment, it'll be difficult to video this. So here's the crank wheel. So it's in front of the harmonic balancer behind the crank pulley. Then this is the adapter that holds the Hall effect sensor here. And that just bolts to these two bolts there. And then you line it up with, you probably can't see it in the video, but this is the seventh tooth. Tooth number seven, that's 60 degrees. So one of the big disadvantages of this is it's gonna push all your pulleys out by three sixteenths of an inch. So like for the water pump, you can see it doesn't line up anymore. You've got to use a spacer underneath here. And the rest of your accessory stuff, you'll have to put washers on it to push it out, which is a pain, but it is what it is. Um, it's actually not as bad with the serpentine setup as it is with the V-belt. Because the V-belt, you've got stuff that mounts on the top as well. It requires more fabrication, but that's the way it works. Okay, to set up the crank trigger, go to ignition settings, the top one. So for spark mode, you want to pick tooth wheel. This can be off, the skip pulses thing, uh, yeah, three is fine. Input capture should be on rising edge, spark output. This is more for your coils, but yeah, going high, number of coils, coil and plug. Um, cam input, uh, I'll go through this at the same time, I guess. The cam position sensor is on CMP. And then for trigger wheel arrangement, you want to have dual wheel with missing tooth. And then this is the number of teeth, including the missing tooth. So even though we only have 35 teeth, you put 36 here, and then you tell it how many missing teeth you have here, which is one. So we've got a 36 minus one. The tooth number one angle, start that at 60, and I'll show you how to get that exact here a little bit later on in the video. And this is incredibly important right here. Main wheel speed has got to be set for crank wheel, not cam. And then the second trigger active, normally I want that on rising edge, but fall, this actually doesn't really matter. And then um, this stuff here is more to do with the coils. So yeah, this is the most important thing, tooth wheel. 36, one, and then start this at 60, we'll change it. Dual wheel with missing tooth, um, crank wheel. This, is, this, this can really foul you up if you accidentally have this on cam wheel instead of crank. Yeah, that can be bad. Okay, I'm gonna describe the first startup procedure, how to get your timing dialed in. So when I do this, I like to have, this is my ignition wire right here. Um, I basically, I'm basically hot wiring the car. To start it, I'm clipping this onto the battery. I do that so that if something goes haywire, I can just quickly reach over here and pull it off. I'm not fumbling around, running back to get inside the car, finding the key, shutting it off. It's just instantly off. And then the other thing is I have this remote button on the starter so I can crank that over. And then lastly, obviously, the timing light is hooked up. So on the computer, you want to go to your ignition settings. And then the top one. And you want to come over here and make sure fixed advance is on fixed timing. That way you can just give it a number and it will hold that timing number which I've got this set on eight. You can use whatever you want, six, eight, 10. And then the next thing, the last thing you wanna do is come over here and I double click tooth number one angle. That way you can use the up and down buttons to move like up increases it by a 10th of a degree and down decreases it. So then I'll get over here, get the timing light ready to go and Crank over the engine, start it, 
and then I that's kind of a two-handed thing I get my fingers over here normally I'm not holding the camera fingers over here ready to go on the up and down and then over here with the timing light and then I'll look down there and the up button moves the timing pointer or not the timing the timing mark to the right clockwise increasing timing advance so it takes longer to fire and the down moves it that way counterclockwise and on these GM balancers the little slot in the balancer is one tenth of a degree so if it looks like it's off by about three widths of the slot then boom 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 hit it three times and it should the timing should be dead on perfect if it's not then there's something wrong you got to stop and figure out what that is but yeah it's usually a pretty quick process start up the engine get the timing dead on and then you're good to go